Welcome back to another week of Procrastination Garage. My name's Matt. So what didn't we do this week? We didn't go to the mountains and play. We just kind of ran out of time. But what we did do is we got the Troy built mower back to operational status. I haven't mowed with it yet. That'll be happening soon. I think it'll be okay. So sit back, watch the video, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and tell all your friends. Thanks. It's Monday morning and we're kind of in a holding pattern for a bit. Uh, last night around 10 o'clock I got a text from one of the renters and it's the kind of text you never want to get. It said, sewer is backing up into the bathtub. Great. So I said, okay, we'll take care of it first thing in the morning. So this morning the first call was to uh, Doug's Rooter and the second call was to Valley Septic. And uh, Doug's Rooter will be out today and Valley Septic not until Friday. So we're just kind of waiting until we hear from Doug's Rooter and we'll meet him over at the house then. So for now, let's just move on to other things. Let's get this last sprinkler line up and running. This is the one we repaired last week. And there's a sprinkler over there that uh, needs to be flushed out. So let me turn the water on and flush that real quick. And we're waiting for water to start shooting up over there. Try and stand out of the way of the sprinkler. There it comes. I don't know if I'd call that shooting up, but there it's starting to go. All right, it's flushed. Sprinklers reassembled. Let's turn the water on for good. At least I hope. While those sprinklers are spinning up, let's take our mobile sprinkler and pull it down this direction a little bit. Let's grab the hose right there. And drag. That's about right. Those are working good. Looking down that direction, everything appears to be doing what it's supposed to. That one's working. One's down here in the grass, little pop-ups seem to be doing okay. There's the one we fixed. Alright, that's a win. Oops, and looking at this one, it's not spraying. It's supposed to be a 90 degree pattern. It's not quite there. So let me go get a tool to clean it out a little bit. Let's see if we can improve this one a little bit. There we go. Oh, I say that. I'll keep working on it. As soon as I turn the camera off, I got it. So, good. Sprinklers have been running for nearly an hour, and I just realized that I actually do have one that's messing up. Usually a good stomp or two will fix it. Let's see if that works. It is not. Well, basically we're going to flood one spot for a while because I'm not shutting it off to fix it. Just got a text message from the renter. He said Doug Rooter is there. So we're going to head over there and see what's up. And hopefully Doug Rooter will solve the problem and That'll be it, but you just never know. I had Doug's Rooter come out uh, many years ago uh, due to a clogged uh, pipe, and it was kind of interesting. They actually went up on the roof and they sent their snake down through one of the sewer vent pipes because we don't have a clean out anywhere else. It's kind of funny to see somebody up on the roof uh, taking care of a clogged drain. <laughs> Doug's Rooter saved the day, crisis averted at the rental. Uh, it, it appears there were roots growing into the uh, pipe coming into the septic tank and he cleared them. Uh, still going to have the septic tank pump but that won't be until Friday so we're not out of the woods until that's done. Of course I wasn't smart to take any video of anything but eh, it doesn't matter. I wasn't doing the work. As I drove past the Ford dealer today they've got a two-door Bronco. Check that little bad boy out. Man what I would kill to have something like that. $60,000. I turned off the sprinklers down below and turned on the ones in the front yard again. That's the one that in the last video that I had to clean out. It's shooting water like it's supposed to now. Nice. Now I'm going to go work on the other sprinkler. My experience has been that these Rainbird uh, can sprinklers work the best. They outlast everything else. 
That being said, they still don't last forever. You do need a special tool to get them out. So these are not brand new sprinklers. These are ones that I've pulled from somewhere else and probably because they didn't go back and forth. But in this position, I just need it to go around in a circle. So hopefully they'll work because I don't think I have any of the brand new ones still in the can. That's the other thing too is when you buy them, they come in the can, but there's no reason to replace the can. It's just easier to just pull the sprinkler out and screw a new one down in there. You get a lot of dirt build up down in the bottom and you need this, it's like a wrench. It needs to go around a spot down in there and it gets covered in mud. little bear. How are you, buddy? <laughs> yeah. You see a hole there? You're <laughs> okay. All right, that one should be fixed. I noticed this sprinkler here wasn't doing a real good job of spinning around, so maybe we'll go ahead and swap it out too. I'm trying to thread another sprinkler onto this one and it's just not wanting to go. And what the real problem is, is because it is too deep down in there, it needs to be brought up about an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my shovel and dig this one up. Bad boy doesn't want to come out. I'm surprised that's a half inch. I thought it was going to be three quarters. It took two tries to fix that one over there, and both sprinklers I put in there are used with unknown histories. This one was really unknown because I got it from a friend of my mom's years ago and decided to just hold on to it just in case. And that one over there is working just fine. So everything's working good down here now. Awesome. Time to pick up the tools and move on to the next project. You probably noticed when I uh, fixed this the first time, I didn't put the grass and dirt back down in the hole. See, in my mind, that was in case there was a problem. The second time, I just committed. That's what I should have done the first time. If I just committed and said, it's going to work, it would have worked. Because that's how it worked the second time.
last night around 9 p.m. I came out and checked all my traps and if I found any uh, gophers I, uh, I dumped them out and then I just put all the traps here in this one area so I need to pick them up and I've got a couple other places to check okay that area is all cleaned up as we free up traps from one area we've got new areas to set them in let me go ahead and see if I can find some tunnels here traps are set and I raked out all the other little areas so that way if uh, we see new activity it'll be easier to spot well now here's a good question did we get one or didn't we there was a lot of extra dirt piled up which tells me a gopher's been in here and didn't get in the trap but that trap over there has definitely been tripped and the fact that it doesn't look like it's full of dirt tells me it probably is full of gopher I'll let you know the fact I removed the traps and filled in the area that should give you your answer sometimes you'll find activity but uh, not too far away you actually got a gopher so the question is is that that same gopher that's a little far maybe not uh, what we'll do is we'll rake this spot out and then we'll keep an eye on it and if we see any more activity here then we'll know we've got to set traps this spot here the first time the gopher backfilled my trap and he got away second time I got him so right now I'm currently 11 and 0 I've got the same situation going on right there uh, just on the other side of the hill there I did trap a gopher so it could be the same one. I'm guessing it's not, but I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to rake this area out, and we'll see if we get new activity here. If we get any more activity here, then we know there's a gopher. I think that's enough time today spent playing with gophers. Let's go park the UTV. Uh, it's 3.30. The dog, she was supposed to get her treats at 3 o'clock, so she's going to be going through the roof. It's Thursday afternoon. Today the dog and I, we were going to head up to the mountains, but I had a haircut this morning and by the time I finished up with that I thought, nah, let's do something else. So the other day I bought some tomato plants and today I was at the store, I bought some pumpkins, some peas, and a bean plant. Uh, these are all starts and everything and so, and that there is uh, supposed to be a strawberry patch, although it's got a lot, it's got dandelions in it. Anyway, let's get this area cleaned up and See if we can make it look a little nicer and get some stuff growing.
So what do we got going on here? We cleaned up the strawberries. I've got this tree thing growing in here. Uh, I'm gonna get some water on that and see if I can yank it out by the roots. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna have to cut it off and it'll keep growing back. This spot over here, you may have seen that it had uh, the little things for tomatoes. I've got three tomato plants, cherry tomato plants that are growing in here. Down here, I've got two peas and one green bean. And I've not had any luck growing peas or green beans in the past. Um, I mean, I know it's all me. I'm a lazy, I, I procrastinate. I'm lazy, I don't get shit done. So I, they don't get taken care of as well as they should. And then over here, we're gonna have uh, three pumpkin plants. And I have pretty good luck with the pumpkins, although sometimes because I plant them late, they, they don't turn color until late. So anyway, next time you see this area, everything will be planted. Look at that, what do you think? I've got a sprinkler set up that's on a timer over against the wall there. It'll go off twice a day, 15 minutes. I can adjust that up or down as needed. In this uh, bed here, I've got uh, three pumpkin plants. In that bed, it, at the ends, I have peas. In the middle, I have uh, green beans. Uh, way over there are the tomatoes. And then we got the strawberries. Also, I'm not sure if you can see it. There's a... Uh, there's a little maple tree popping up there. I didn't have the heart to tear it out. I'm going to try and maybe replant it somewhere else. I haven't decided yet. Right now I've got the sprinklers turned down. So it's just barely reaching. In fact, right now it's not reaching everything. Um, only because I've got cans over here in these bags that I didn't want to fill up with water. I need to move the cans. I need to turn them into recycling is what I need to do. But anyway, I don't know. I think that's a pretty good accomplishment for today, don't you? All right. Next. Just to show you guys, I follow through. Uh, I've been running water on this for about an hour, and I'm in the process of pulling it out, and it is coming out. Bailey was helping me. You can see I got it out. And in fact, I even got out the uh, dandelion, big dandelion roots that were right next to it. So this is the beauty of having irrigation water, is I could just let it trickle. Because I wouldn't want to abuse my well that way, or even city water have to pay for it. It's always something. When I was shutting down the sprinklers in the backyard the other day, I noticed I had a whole lot of water bubbling up over here. So today I came and checked it out, and sure enough, broken sprinkler. I don't know if you can see it down there in the hole, but it snapped off down at the, I think it's just an elbow. So we need to dig this up and replace it. From where that sprinkler is there, this whole area is a problem. As you can see, I've got a failing retaining wall. It's made out of railroad ties, and uh, this part here is given away. And the only good spot is where the rocks are here around the corner. So eventually this whole section needs to be replaced pretty much all the way over to where the trucks are parked. But I'm, it's not in the budget for me to buy the concrete block I need to do it with. So we just need to keep it pieced together and, and working. The good news is this will make for a quick and easy repair. We basically just need to cut that line and put an elbow on it and then build this piece here. We can handle that. I've got my little helper today. Huh, Skeeter, are you helping Daddy work on PVC pipe? Yeah? Check it out, my new toolbox. The tabletop is clean. I'm going to use it as a work surface. So going through my parts, Got the uh, elbow, no problem there. And uh, I found that I actually had that piece hooked onto a piece of three quarter inch pipe, which is good because there should have been a little bit of, I, I need this up by another half inch to three quarters of an inch because this one was down on the ground a little too far. And this is kind of a temporary fix anyway. So we're gonna cut this one off and stick it in there and of course I didn't bring my saw. Yep. I 
I use a cheap old hacksaw because uh, it's nice and compact. It lets me get down in the dirt and work. All right, got my primer and PVC cement. Always use primer. I learned the hard way. Joints don't stick if you don't use PVC primer. Little bit of glue. Together and twist. Hold for a little bit. If you don't hold, sometimes the joint will pop apart. That should do it. Screw the sprinkler back on. Let's go put it in. All fixed. I took the sprinkler head off so we can flush it out. Probably won't do it until I run the sprinkler beginning of next week. So we need to backfill the hole still. But that's it. We're done. It's Friday afternoon, or it's still Friday afternoon, depending upon how I piece this video together. Anyway, headed over to the rental. Valley Septic, the company that's coming out to pump the septic tank, is on site. We want to go over there and make sure there's no problems, or if there are, to find out firsthand. And we might do a little work while we're over there as well. Yep, he's here. The guy's digging up the tank now. I don't need to be bothering him, so I'm just cutting some branches off these trees that are in the way when I mow. I've got them all cut. I'm just loading them in the back of the truck now. Next up, along the fence line back there, a bunch of leaves that I can't get to with the mower. So I've got my leaf blower and a rake. I'll bring them out in the grass so next time I mow and clean them up. You can see I've got some leaves raked out. Those will stay there till Wednesday when I mow. Or else they won't. Maybe the wind will blow and they'll end up somewhere else. Anyway, I ended up with uh, about three quarters of a pickup load of stuff. Just doing busy work over here. All the work's done. I left two big holes. They're going to install risers on these on Monday. So in the future, they won't have to dig them up. That'll make it easier for everybody involved. A little cheaper for me, although for what it costs to put the risers in, I could probably have it dug up two or three times. I don't know. Anyway, let's head home. Nothing like a Friday night campfire. Figure it's a good way to get rid of the stuff that we cut over at the rental today. I've got that pile over there. A little bit of stuff in the wheelbarrow. And there's still just a little bit of residue in the back of my truck. So we'll just hang out here and enjoy the warm evening. And the fire. And the blue sky. Nice night. It's late Saturday afternoon and we've got some room in the shop. I've done a little bit of straightening up in here. Let's uh, move the Troy built mower in here and let's get to work on it. Uh, we need to get that thing up and running so we can mow with it again. So what do we know about this mower? Well, for the last several years, it's had a exhaust leak that I assumed was at the exhaust manifold where it meets up with the cylinder head. Last year, last summer, we replaced both the exhaust gaskets and we still have air leaking somewhere. The machine has gotten louder and uh, finally got to the point where it was really hard to start and then it reached a point where it wouldn't start at all. And that's where it's been since 
last fall. So I suspect it's got head gasket problems. So we're going to start tearing into it and see what we find. You see that? I've got a bolt completely missing out of there. Now I know there was a bolt in it. I tightened it back up so that's not really what our problem is. But it certainly is a problem. Well here's the deal. So one of those bolts there was missing. This one was a little loose. So we did not have a seal. I mean the thing was just flopping around. So while I don't think this was the leak that was my problem, I don't know for sure, and I don't think in good conscience I want to keep tearing the thing apart until I verify. So what I need to do is find another bolt like this and get the thing put back together and start up and see what it's going to do, or see if it will start. Um, certainly, as loose as that was, that would have contributed to the hard starting and the no start condition. But I swear, I mean, I'm pretty sure when I put this back together that there was a bolt in here. I mean, is it possible I forgot a bolt? I suppose it's possible, but it's highly unlikely. So I think it came loose after that. But I don't know. We need to find a bolt. Uh, I may have to wait till tomorrow and go to the hardware store. But let me look through my stash. We found a bolt that uh, has the same threads. It's a little long, so I'm going to shorten it on the grinder and clean it up because it's pretty filthy. Uh, this is not a permanent solution. If uh, if this solves my problem, I do want to get the uh, the correct bolt. Um, but it'll work for now. So I do, I want to get lock washers too. Neither one of them had lock washers on them. And I don't know why, but I'm going to put lock washers on them. I found a couple of lock washers and the bolt has been shortened to the appropriate length. I put a nut on it first so uh, I can thread that off to make sure the end's not boogered up. And in fact, in this case, it is a little bit. I'm going to need a wrench to get that nut all the way off. I say wrench, I meant pliers. All right, let's put it back together. The little header pipe is back installed and you can see it's not loose. And that one over there is loose as well, so I think we have to take this guard off here. But we'll go ahead and tighten that one up, and oh my god, it could be missing a bolt too. We'll get it apart and I'll show you. Well, I don't know, can you see it? Should be a... Where is it? Right there. My finger is there should be a bolt there. There's not. So we need another bolt. Inside bolt is there, outside bolt is missing. Now the problem is... Well, I found a bolt, one bolt to work. Can I find a second bolt to work? Hope so. I don't know how well you can tell, but that's a Torx drive there. The one on the other side was an Allen drive. And then, of course, what I put in there was just a regular hex bolt. So I just got a real mismatch of parts here. I did find another one. This one actually even had a lock washer already attached to it. Now, the only problem is it's, it's just a touch long, not, not much longer. But uh, when I thread a nut on it, it has a real tight spot. So instead of uh, screwing that up into the cylinder head, which is probably aluminum, I'm going to go ahead and take a tap or a die or whichever one it is 
and clean those threads up a little bit to make sure it'll screw on better without fouling up my head. In thinking about it, I think that's the die. I think the tap is uh, is the one that goes down in and makes thread. I think this is the one that, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I used it. It screws on perfectly fine now. So now I just need to go over to my uh, grinder and shorten it a little bit. And then let's put this back together. And the second header pipe is installed and tight with the first one. Now we'll get the muffler in place and then we'll go ahead and see if we can get the thing to fire up. The muffler's back on. I did make one mistake. I should have put the little header pipes into the exhaust before I and tightened the exhaust down before I tightened up the header pipes. I ended up having to loosen the one on the on the driver's side there. No big deal. Everything's tightened back up. So now we'll see if the thing will start. I assume we have a dead battery, so I'll probably need to jump back. Turn the battery on. Okay, I put the mower all back together. We maybe need to call this episode uh, Half-Ass Garage instead of Procrastination Garage. Um, I still have an exhaust leak on the right-hand side here. It's small, but it's there. Uh, I didn't feel one on the left-hand side. Uh, I'm going to retighten the bolts uh, after the next mowing. Um, I'm getting a little bit of blow-by on the little blue smoke coming out of it occasionally. It might have just built up. Maybe it'll stop doing that. And I got a little bit of oil that kind of dropped down on the ground as it was running here at high idle. So I don't know. This engine's probably seen better days. I imagine it's got quite a bit of dust in it over the years. Um, I've got the battery tender on it. And you can see it's flashing red. And red flashing means that it is not charging. So I'm going to swap a different charger on here in a minute. So we're just going to let it sit. Uh, Monday or Tuesday I will mow here. I will use this mower. And I'll check the oil, and uh, hopefully it'll, everything will be fine. And, and I suspect this mower is going to be kind of back to normal, which maybe is good, maybe is bad, I don't know. But I don't really want to fool around with it. If I can get it to work, and then that's what we're going with. So anyway, I'm going to swap the, mower, uh, swap the uh, charger on it and see what that does. All right, scratch that. The battery tender is now charging. Uh, it helps when you have the leads actually hooked into the charger. What happened is I put the leads on the battery, and I plugged the battery tender into the outlet, and I didn't connect the two. I thought I had, and so that's why it was flashing. So just in case of me being a dumbass, I did get out my other battery charger just in case, but I think this one will be fine. And this tender won't bring it back quickly, but like I said, I probably won't be mowing until Monday or Tuesday, and today's only Saturday. So we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. So we're wrapping this project up. That's going to wrap up this week's Procrastination Garage. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. So what did we get done? Well, we got the Troy Built Mower back to operational status and we're going to try mowing with it soon. That's a big plus. Uh, also got my garden, in quotes, garden, 
looking good and planted and everything. And we worked around the yard a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember the number one goal of Procrastination Garage is to keep me motivated, to get me out, out in the shop, out in the yard, or up in the mountains playing. Uh, and so I'm not sitting around watching YouTube and TikTok videos all the time, which uh, I tend to do. So I hope you'll come back next week. Uh, I hope you'll hit the like button. I hope you'll subscribe. Down in the comments, uh, tell me about the stuff you're working on or about the things you're procrastinating about. Uh, until then, this is Procrastination Garage. My name's Matt, and we'll see you next week.